Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Many of you are fans of space. Many of you are fans of the space shuttle. And some of you may even indeed have favorite space shuttles based upon either their design decisions, their thermal protection system patterns, or even just their name. But today I want to answer the question of which was the fastest space shuttle. And the origin of this idea goes back to a, well, someone being wrong on the internet and me having to correct them. Which is a terrible character flaw, but in my defense, someone else corrected the original person first, and I had to then correct them. You see, it wasn't my idea to start this whole, like, correcting people chain on the internet, but it was my idea to go out and make a spreadsheet and actually figure out which was the fastest space shuttle. Now, to be clear, this thread started out about aircraft speed, and it's only fair to really focus on this space shuttle's speed in the atmosphere. Besides, being in space, being in orbit, you're, you basically have to orbit at a specific speed to orbit at a specific altitude. So there's no like actual vehicle like mojo going on. It's you have to do it regardless of whether you fly like an aircraft or not. Now on ascent, the space shuttle does actually fly pretty hard through the atmosphere. This is a you know, video sequence captured from a WB-57 that was like a couple of hundred miles away looking sideways so that the space shuttle would be silhouetted or projected against cr clouds so that we could see shock waves coming off it. This was from the return to flight uh, after Columbia, and they were interested to see if the shock patterns could teach them anything about foam shedding from the tanks. Also, this is a really awesome piece of footage. And to be fair to the other two major contenders in this thread, what, for all the space shuttle's awesome power, it actually operates at lower speeds at any altitude compared to both the SR-71 and the X-15. For the shuttle to really get up to its high velocities, it has to get up high above the atmosphere so that it can ignore it and basically pick up all that speed needed for orbital velocity. And also, on ascent, it has those boosters, it has that tank attached to it. It is not flying like an airplane, it is flying like a rocket. But on re-entry, that is when the shuttle finally gets to spread its wings and fly like an aircraft, gliding, experiencing the heat and fury of re-entry, protected by its thermal protection system, rolling left and right, carefully it controlling its distance so that it runs out of all that orbital energy just when it gets to the landing site so it can spiral down and perform an elegant landing Ideally on the center line, but you know from this angle nobody can tell, so as long as you make sure it stops on the center line, nobody will know when the press photo was taken. So as the only orbital vehicle on the list, the space shuttle was the default winner. Now the question was, which space shuttle specifically, because there were multiple orbiters that all flew different missions. And initially I thought that it meant the fastest space shuttle had to be Discovery, because that launched the Hubble Space Telescope. It was the highest altitude space shuttle mission ever flown. It deployed the Hubble Space Telescope into an orbit of 333 nautical miles or 616 kilometers. And then it performed its re-entry burn at an altitude of 330 nautical miles, 611 kilometers. And from there, it fell down. And what happens is it gains kinetic energy as it falls down, converting the potential energy into you know, kinetic energy. Therefore, because it comes from the highest altitude, it has to have the highest velocity when it hits entry interface about 400,000 feet up. So I initially did some rough math to confirm this, but then I found this amazing document that compiled all the statistics and it told us that for STS-31, the space shuttle entered at a velocity of 26,120 feet per second or 7.961 kilometers per second. Now, for comparison, the second space shuttle flight had an uh, entry velocity of 25,726 feet per second, or 7.841 kilometers per second. So, of course, I had to go and correct that fool on Twitter who had posted an image of the wrong space shuttle. Yeah, STS-31's fastest space shuttle ever, right? Right? I did check all the other missions to Hubble, and it turns out that one other one also had exactly the same entry velocity, but that was also Space Shuttle Discovery, so we're okay, Space Shuttle Discovery is still the fastest one. But there was a fundamental problem with my understanding. See, those velocities were measured relative to the center of the Earth, and if we're talking about the fastest aircraft, aircraft measure their speed relative to the air, not with the center of the Earth. And when you look at the atmosphere, the atmosphere tends to move you know, approx to a first approximation at the same speed as the surface below it. Obviously, up at 400,000 feet, things may be slightly different, but 
you know, let's be clear, you have to subtract out the rotation of the Earth if you want to get the proper speed entry speed for these things. So for the later space shuttle missions, they actually published very detailed uh, re-entry information, including like the ground tracks at long range, the ground track at medium range, and this table of cryptic numbers, which tells us exactly how fast it was going at various important parts of the re-entry process. So the important column is velocity in kilofeet per second. The first row shows the d-orbit time of ignition, and it says the velocity is 25.2 VI. VI means the inertial velocity frame. That is the non-rotating reference frame with respect to the Earth. And the next important row is the third one that is labeled EI, entry interface. This is where the atmosphere has become thick enough that we have to worry about it. So for the velocity column there, it says 24.9 VREL. So that's now velocity relative to the surface of the Earth. So they only started publishing this data you know, late in the shuttle's career, and almost all those missions were to the space station. But there was STS-125, which was the final Hubble servicing mission. And you can immediately look at that and see that the entry interface number is 24.7 kilofeet per second. That's 200 feet per second slower than the other space shuttle missions on this list. And this is all down to the fact that we have to subtract out the rotation of the Earth. Hubble was a big payload and they wanted to maximize the performance of the space shuttle. So they had to go into a 28 degree orbit. That's the best performing orbit for the space shuttle. However, the International Space Station, which the other missions were going to, it had to go into an orbit that could be reached by Russia, an important partner in the space station project. So it went to a 51.6 degree orbit. And that means for the return from the Hubble, the space shuttle would be coming from the west, going east, just like the Earth rotates. But for a return from the International Space Station, it was coming from south to north. And so subtracting out the rotation of the Earth had a much bigger effect on the return from the Hubble Space Telescope, which is why it was actually slower than the return from the lower altitude International Space Station. So now the question is, among the missions that went to the space station, were some faster than others for some reason? And the answer is yes, there is a good reason because towards the end of the space station construction, they raised it into a higher orbit after primary construction had been complete. And that meant that the space station, of course, needs less fuel to maintain its orbit. So the final two missions went from a higher altitude. And based on the numbers that I can find, it looks like STS-135 wins the day by a very small amount. The official number here is 25,000 feet per second, but that is only to, you know, 100 feet per second precision. So that was Atlantis, and therefore Atlantis is the fastest space shuttle, right? Well, not really, because... You see, we don't really have the level of precision we need to declare Atlantis as the absolute winner, and we're also missing this data for a lot of the earlier missions. We only have the velocity relative to the inertial reference frame. But we also have the orbital inclination, we have the final orbit they were on, and we have the distance to the landing site and the cross range. So I decided to break out the spherical trigonometry and orbital mechanics and come up with a spreadsheet which would estimate what the actual entry velocity would be in subtracting out the uh, rotation of the Earth. Now, this was still somewhat approximated, and there are multiple solutions for the case where the launch site has a lower latitude than the orbital inclination. And we're actually interested in the orbits with the really high inclination. And the highest inclination a space shuttle ever reached was 62 degrees, and that was on STS-36, which was a classified Department of Defense mission which we still don't know anything about. And so my number crunching suggests that this might be another 30 feet per second faster than the re-entry from STS-135. Now, there is a problem that the errors on this aren't really well defined, and I could be wrong. 30 feet per second is not a great margin. But you know what? It doesn't matter because this mission was also flown by Atlantis. Therefore, Atlantis retains its crown. But still, I had to be sure. So I went and looked at all the other missions, and eventually I found one STS-48, which not only went to a relatively high inclination, 57 degrees, but also went to a pretty high altitude of over 300 nautical miles because it had to launch a satellite called URS, the Upper Atmosphere Research Satellite. And when I plugged those numbers into my math, 
it gave me an entry velocity with respect to the Earth of 25,240 feet per second. That is 250 feet per second faster than what I predicted for STS-36. This was far and away the fastest space shuttle ever. And this mission was flown by Discovery, so Discovery takes its crown back. I hope you will have me back, Discovery. I love you. I have a model of you sitting on my desk. Now, since I have all this math, I figured, let's find out what the slowest re-entry by a shuttle was. And I dug around and found STS-8. So this mission launched into the 28.5 degree orbit that is the lowest inclination you can get from Florida. And after it deployed a few satellites at an altitude of 160 nautical miles, Towards the end of the mission, it dropped down to an altitude of about 117 nautical miles because they had experiments on board that wanted to look at the rarefied upper atmosphere. From there, it performed its, re its deorbit and re-entry. And by my math, the entry velocity was probably about 24,300 feet per second. That is 7.406 kilometers per second, although there are some pretty big errors on that since I had to do some math. But yeah, that comfortably made it the slowest re-entry by a space shuttle that I could find. So congratulations to Challenger for this uh, achievement. Unfortunately, Challenger couldn't be with us to accept the award tonight. Now, the space shuttle isn't the only space plane that flew, so does it really hold the record? Well, I did some looking around, and the X-37B... It goes to orbits that are typically 40 degree inclination and none of those, those actually look like they're faster than Discovery on STS-48. Buran could have possibly taken the crown of fastest space plane if it had been launched more than once. Its uh, lowest inclination possible was 51.6 degrees and from its one flight its entry speed was 24,800 feet per second. And China's super-secret space plane, which just arrived back in the last day or so, it goes to an inclination of 50 degrees, but still lower altitude. So I think STS-48 is absolutely still going to retain the crown for now. And, and so for all of you that are commenting right now about Apollo being the fastest plane ever, or New Horizons, or Parker Solar Probe, I, I think let's make clear the ground rules here. This has to be something that flies like an aircraft. It has to actually land horizontally without deploying parachutes or anything like that. So by those measures, I'm pretty sure that Space Shuttle Discovery is the fastest aircraft ever. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.